Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK. We're playing Upgraded Fallout Precon decks. Roughly 20 cards swapped. Kyle's playing Dr. Madison Lee. It's an Artifacts Matters deck that happens to make energy. Kyle loves energy. Scott is playing the Wise Mothman. He wants to dish out rad counters as often as possible and mill out his opponents. Chris is playing Dogmeat Ever Loyal. He's gonna suit up his creatures with auras and equipment and one-shot his opponents. And he'll find a bunch of junk along the way. And I'm playing Kaisar, Legion's Emperor. The plan is to make legions of creature tokens and overwhelm my opponents. Please subscribe, follow us on Instagram, join our Discord, and stick around for an appearance from my fat cat, Meatball. He's so chunky. Check the description of this video for some pretty cool links. Kyle kicks us off by playing Razor Tide Bridge as his land before passing to Scott. He plays an island and has to say go over to Chris. He draws and plays a fancy command tower from the set. He then suits it up by playing Wild Growth on it, making it tap for even more mana. Afterwards, he passes the turn to me. I draw and play a Temple of Silence, scrying one and putting it to the bottom. On to Kyle's turn two, he drops an Urza Saga, one of his upgraded cards for the deck. It's pretty good for finding an artifact. After that, he plays Thought Vessel. I absolutely adore the Fallout artwork. Then he very politely passes the turn over to Scott. He then draws and plays a Swamp as his land for turn before casting Vexing Radgall. This will either give out a couple of rad counters or proliferate. Not that bad. He then passes over to Chris. He plays an Explorer's Scope hoping to get some future ramp action on. Sadly, he misses a land drop, so he passes the turn over to me. I play a mountain and laugh at Chris. Then I play Talisman of Hierarchy, getting my own ramp action on before passing to Kyle. After he draws Urza's Saga triggers, and he plays Endurance Bobblehead. It's an artifact, it gets a mana and more. He says go over to Scott, who draws and plays Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth as his land, one of his upgrades. He then moves into combat with his vexing Radgall swinging at Kyle in the air, dealing one point of damage and then giving him two radiation counters. So now after Kyle draws, he'll have to mill two cards and possibly lose life. On Chris's turn, he found a mountain. Congrats. Then he plays his commander, Dogmeat, ever loyal. When that ETBs, he'll have to mill five cards, and but it might find him an aura or equipment and put it into his hand. Sadly, he whiffs on his first go with his commander. With Dogmeat out, he passes the turn to me. I draw and play an Evolving Wilds as my land. Afterwards, I play Kellogg, Dangerous Mind. He makes treasures and steals babies that somehow become named Father later on. He's a hasty boy, so I swing at Scott because Scott gives rad counters and I don't want that. I make a treasure on the attack, Scott takes three, and afterwards I sack my Evolving Wilds to go and find a Swamp. Then I pass the turn over to Kyle. After he draws, Urza's Saga will trigger, so he'll go find a Soul Ring and put it out onto the battlefield. He did float one colorless mana as well. Then the Radiation Counters will trigger, so he'll mill two cards. If any are non-lands, it'll reduce his Radiation Counters, and he'd lose a life for each. In this case, it was two lands, so his radiation counters just stick around. He plays a mountain, and then he casts his commander, Dr. Madison Lee. With her out, he wants to start casting artifact spells so that he can generate energy and use it for good. On Scott's turn, he plays Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth, and gives me forests, which I appreciate. He then casts his commander, the Wise Mothman. When that ETBs, everybody gains a radiation counter, including Scott. Got him. Now that we're all ratted up, he moves into combat, swinging at Chris in the air with his vexing Radgall, dealing one point of damage. And because he attacked a guy with a radiation counter, he just proliferates, so we all gain more. On Chris's turn, he draws, and then he has to mill two. One of them is a non-land permanent, so he down ticks his counters and loses one life. The Mothman triggered, so Scott puts a counter on it. Then Chris casts Sticky Fingers on Dogmeat. This will give Dogmeat menace and the ability to make some treasures. Chris then casts Abundant Growth on his mountain, still kind of choked on mana. He equips Explorer's Scope on Dogmeat and attacks Scott. When he attacks, he makes a junk and he looked at the top card of his library. It's not a land, so it stays there. He deals some commander damage and makes a treasure. Afterwards, he passes the turn over to me. I draw and then I have to mill two. Both of them are non-land permanents, so I lose two radiation counters and I lose two life. The wise Mothman triggers, and Scott puts another plus one plus one counter on it, as well as his vexing Radgull. After all that, I play Diamond City, 
as my land for turn, it enters with a shield that I can move around. Then I cast Legate Lanius, Kaisar's Ace. When he ETBs, he decimates. So, each of my opponents will sack one thing because of math. Then Legate Lanius gets a plus one plus one counter for each creature that an opponent sacrificed. So, three. I then move into combat. I swing Kellogg at Kyle dealing three points of damage and gaining another treasure token. With nothing left to do, I pass the turn over to Kyle. He draws and on his turn five, he mills four whole cards from his radiation counters. Three of them end up being non-land permanents, so he removes three of his radiation counters, takes three life, and puts all four of them to the bin. And after that, he plays Cliff Top Retreat as his land for turn. He decides he doesn't really like having so many radiation counters, so he casts Confiscation Coup targeting the wise Mothman on Scott's board. So he'll generate four energy and then use it immediately to gain control of that bad boy. And so he does. Afterwards, he plays Plasma Caster. It's an artifact that can generate him some energy. Then he passes the turn over to Scott. He draws and then has to mill two given his two radiation counters. So he mills two non-land permanents, therefore clearing his rad counters and taking two life. Mothman triggers on Kyle's side of the board this time, and then Scott plays Restless Reef as his land for turn before casting Feral Ghoul. This thing can get bigger and potentially give out a bunch of rad counters. On Chris's turn, he draws and then has to mill one. It's a non-land permanent, so he loses that rad counter and loses a life while Mothman triggers. He then uses a junk token to exile Temple of Plenty, which he could play this turn, and he does. When it enters the battlefield, he'll scry one, keeping it on top. Then he drops a Soul Ring, right on time. And then, with the help of his suited up command tower and a treasure, he casts Armory Paladin. That'll have him start impulse drawing whenever he casts an aura or equipment. He then casts an equipment in the form of Pit Boy 3000. He'll exile the top card of his library, and then after that he equips his Explorer Scope to his Armory Paladin. He passes the turn over to me. I draw and play my own Cliff Top Retreat. Take that, Kyle. I then cast Boomer Scrapper. With that ETBs or attacks, I lose a life and make a junk. He'll also get a plus one counter every time a token leaves the battlefield under my control. I then sack that junk token, give it a plus one. I then impulse draw a swamp off the top of my library, and I kick myself for playing a land first. I move into combat at Chris with Kellogg, dealing him three points of damage. I make a treasure, and as a follow-up, I play Desdemona Freedom's Edge. She can help me get some low-cost things back from my graveyard. I cast her with some treasure, so Boomer Scrapper gets another plus one counter. I then pass the turn. On Kyle's turn, he draws and then has to mill one because of radiation. And it's a non-land, so he loses a life and loses his rad counters. Afterwards, he recasts his commander, Dr. Madison Lee. Now he has two commanders on his side of the board. As a follow-up, he plays Loyal Apprentice. It'll start making Thopters because his commander's on the board. He moves into combat, making a Thopter. He decides to attack me with the Mothman for no good reason. On the attack, each player will gain a radiation counter, and he crashes into me with Mothman dealing nine points of Scott's commander damage. He passes the turn over to Scott, who draws and then has to mill. It's a non-land, so he loses his radiation and takes a life while the Mothman decides to throw a plus one counter out on Dr. Madison Lee. Then Scott plays Nuclear Fallout, where X equals four. Therefore, all creatures get shrunk minus eight, minus eight. Each player then gets four rad counters as well. And Feral Ghoul dies in this process. It's a two-two, so each of Scott's opponents get two more rad counters. What? Scott feels a little safer, and he passes the turn over to Chris. He draws and has to start losing a bunch of cards due to his rad counters. So he'll mill the top seven cards of his library. Five of them were non-land permanents, so he'll lose five of the rad counters as well as five life before putting all those to the bin. He then plays Roadside Reliquary as his land, then recasts his commander, Dogmeat, ever loyal. So once again, he'll mill five more cards and return an aura or equipment from the graveyard to his hand. So the biggest problem that I have with this whole thing is that the wise Mothman is not dead from nuclear fallout and it's still getting bigger. Chris found a Mantle of the Ancients with Dogmeat's ability and returns it to his hand. He then casts all that glitters. So Dogmeat gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment. We remember that the card he exiled last turn is no longer valid. He then passes the turn over to me. I draw and then I have to mill seven cards as well. Five of those were non-lands, so I lose five and I lose five rad counters. 
Then I play my land. It's a memorial to glory, and it could potentially make me some tokens, which I am greatly lacking. I decide to play my commander, Kaisar, Legion's Emperor, and it's definitely Kaisar from Fallout New Vegas. I then pass. On Kyle's turn, he draws, and then he also has to mill seven cards. Among them, only three were non-land permanents, so he goes to 29 and has four radiation counters left. Then he casts Wake the Past. That's great news for Kyle. He returns all the artifact cards from his graveyard and puts them out onto the battlefield, and they all gain haste. He gets a Rust Veil Bridge, Silver Bluff Bridge, Wayfarer's Bobble, Intelligence Bobble Head, Robo Brain Warmine, Nucacola Vending Machine, and the Pridwin, which makes seven whole 2 2 human knights. Those knights can get bigger if an artifact ETBs on Kyle's board. He uses one of the knights to crew the Pridwin. It's got haste. Then he attacks me with the Mothman, Robo Brain at Scott, and the Pridwin at Chris. Before damage, I cast Anguished Unmaking on that pesky Mothman, finally getting it off the board. I lose three life in the process, and Scott gets his commander back to the command zone. Chris takes his beats, so does Scott, and then Kyle passes the turn, feeling very secure in his position. Scott draws, and then has to mill four cards due to his radiation counters. He clears all of them, given that they were all non-lands, and he drops to 23. He then plays an island as his land for turn before casting Fractured Sanity. All of his opponents will mill 14 whole cards. I hope that Kyle doesn't have some other sort of artifact reanimation thing, Scott. Afterwards, Scott plays Lily Bowen, Raging Grandma. Lily can get really big and possibly gain Scott a bunch of life. He then passes the turn over to Chris. He draws, has to mill two, removes one counter, loses one life, and then drops a forest as his land before casting Mantle of the Ancients, targeting Dogmeat. And in response to the cast, Kyle casts Dispatch on Dogmeat. He clearly has enough artifacts, so Dogmeat gets exiled instead of just tapped. Returns to the command zone, and Chris's sadness hits the stack quite hard. He follows it up by playing Agility Bobblehead, and afterwards passes the turn over to me. I draw, and then I have to mill two cards. I find one non-land permanent, so lose a counter, lose a life. Afterwards, I play Thrill Kill Disciple. I paid the squad cost by discarding a card, as well as paying one more mana into it. So I get a copy of Thrill Kill Disciple, and hopefully I can get my commander to start doing his commandery things. I move into combat, swinging at Scott, only because I can't attack into Kyle. On the attack, I sacrifice a Thrill Kill Disciple, getting a junk token, as well as making two tapped and attacking human soldiers, also attacking Scott. And then I draw a card and lose one life. Scott blocks one of the 1-1s one with Lily, and then he takes the rest of the damage, dropping to 18. I then sacrifice a junk token, so I exile a Powder Ganger, and then immediately pay for it and destroy Kyle's Pridwin before it does anything else diabolical. On to Kyle's turn 8, he draws, and then has to mill 4 more cards. Two of them are non-lands, so he'll lose 2 and lose 2 counters as well. Afterwards, he plays Bottle Cap Blast. He'll target my Powder Ganger, so the 5 damage will have 3 over the top, therefore generating 3 treasure tokens. Because an artifact ETB'd, he pumps up his knights and then swings into combat focusing on Chris, dealing enough damage to knock him out of the game, and pressures me more as well. I chump block, and I gain a junk token in the process. Kyle passes, and on Scott's upkeep, Lily triggers, so he'll double the plus one plus one counters. Then he draws and plays Power Fist. That can work well with Lily. He then equips it to Lily, giving her trample and the ability to add more plus one counters. He then moves into combat. He swings at Kyle with his vigilancy thing. He takes his beats, and Lily gets bigger. With nothing left to do, Scott passes the turn. On my turn, I draw, and then I have to pitch one card to the bin. It's a non-land, so I lose my rad counter and a life. I need some options, so I sacrifice my junk token, and then I reveal Lethal Scheme off the top, and I don't really know what to make of this card. I think I just hate it. It's a four-cost thing that connives my creatures that I use to convoke it, and I don't have great targets, I'm focusing on Kyle, so I just kill one of his tokens before playing Skull Clamp. I then attach it to my token that just connived. Then I move into combat with my commander at Kyle. On the attack, I sacrifice the token, making two more tokens, and I get to draw a card and lose a life as well. I then resolve Skull Clamp because the token it was attached to died, and I get to draw two more cards. 
Kyle takes his beats, and then I play a Swamp as my land for turn. On my end step, Kyle activates his Nuka-Cola vending machine, making a food, and then paying into that food in order to gain three life, sacrificing it. And because he sacrificed a food token, he makes a tapped treasure token as well. And then onto his turn proper, he draws, and still has two rad counters he has to deal with, so he mills two more from the top, and finally clears those things off of his board. He loses two. He wants to see his options, so he activates Intelligence Bobblehead at the low, low cost of five mana in order to draw two in this case. He found an island and plays it. After that, he'll activate Nuka-Cola Vending Machine once again, making a food token. This triggers his Human Knights, giving them plus two, plus two. Then he path to exiles Lily, and a sad Scott casts Inspiring Call in response in order to draw one card because he has a creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. He does so, Path resolves, Lily goes away, then Kyle moves into combat, swings two knights and Robo Brain at Scott, and he represents lethal by attacking me with four 4-4 four, four knights. Up before blocks, I surprise him with a Secure the Wastes, where X equals three, making three 1-1 one, one tokens, which I then use to just chump block three of the knights that are attacking me. So overall, I take four and drop down to eight. Hanging on by a thread, but I get at least one more turn. Scott takes his damage, dropping down to six. Kyle passes, Scott draws, and plays a Golgari Thug. This may come as a surprise, but that is not a part of the pre-con deck. That's one of his upgrades. Afterwards, he passes, I draw, and move right into the red zone, swinging at Kyle with everything I got. On the attack, I sack a token, make two tokens, and then I throw three points of damage at Kyle with Kaisar's third ability. So, he takes all the beats, dropping down to 8. I then cast Martial Coup, where X equals 6. So I'm gonna nuke all of the creatures on the board, but I'm left behind with 6 1-1 tokens, and nobody else has any creatures. So I feel very confident and comfortable with my position, despite our low life totals. When Golgari Thug dies, its triggered ability hits the stack, so Scott puts a glowing one on top of his library. We all clean up our board states. On my end step, Kyle sacks another food token, gaining three life. On to Kyle's turn, he draws and plays a surprising rise and shine on overload. So all of his artifacts become four fours. Man, we did not see that coming. He lines up his attacks and makes sure that he has enough to get over the top of anything we could throw at him. He cheeky, Scott animates his restless reef and it doesn't matter, Kyle attacked him with enough anyway. We both get knocked out of the game. Congratulations, Kyle. And as promised, here's Meatball. He's so chunky. I'd also like to take a moment and thank our Patreon subscribers. Your continued support truly goes a long way in making mostly casual commander content. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash mostly casual commander. It'll also give you earlier access to the videos that we post than everybody else. You'll also have access to a patron-only Discord chat and other benefits as well. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, like the content that you've been enjoying, let us know what you thought about this game and the new Fallout Commanders, and as always, thanks for watching.